Hello, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Winning Mondays with Keller Williams Malaysia. My name is Mariah. I'm the training coordinator here. And uh, I'm so excited to be back, right? We've had like three weeks off uh, with all the Raya celebrations, all the holidays. So I hope everyone's been having a great time, eating a lot of good food and enjoying a lot of fellowship. I know I have been doing that. <laughs> and um, yeah, today I have Jonathan with me here, John, our CEO of Keller Williams Malaysia. Do you want to say hi, John, with your croaky voice? Hi, everyone. I myself <laughs> funny today, but forgive me, it's the COVID, the post-COVID recovery that I'm in right now. Yeah, some of us have been partying, but poor John has been like trying to recover from COVID. <laughs> anyway, he's, so he's here with us uh, to do a very special session. I know a lot of you are very excited about today. A lot of people were talking to me about this all week, like excited for today, because we have a very special guest today, um, Tony Ong. He's going to be talking about how he closed 120 deals in one year, in his first year as an agent, which is quite, quite amazing. But even before we get into that, you know, I always love to just start you guys off with a little poll to get you warmed up. I want to see where everyone is at, because actually, I don't know how many transactions you all normally uh, close in one year, right? So I have here a poll question for us to answer together. So the, first, the question is, how many transactions do you close each month on average? So the options are zero to two transactions, three to five transactions, or more than five I think for Tony, we need like a more than 10 section. <laughs> I don't know how many of you will answer that high. <laughs> so yeah, let's see, let's see. Oh, interesting. I'm seeing the results coming in. It's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. So are you guys excited to have Tony here? Excited to hear um, about someone that's doing very well. I know it always inspires us. <laughs> yeah, to hear about someone who's, um, yeah, being successful, right? We always want to hear these great stories. So I'll just give a few more minutes to uh, to close the poll. But if you're feeling, uh, you know, excited to, to hear from Tony, can you just write in the chat, like, say something like, hi, Tony, you know, say something in the chat just to welcome him in preparation. And, uh, and please prepare also if you have any questions you want to ask him. I have a lot of questions prepared. John and I are going to ask him. But if there's any specific questions that you want to ask, you can uh, prepare in the chat as well. Okay. Yes, so let's welcome Tony. I think we have about 40 people on here on Zoom and then a number, a bunch also in uh, in Facebook, but he can see all your, your, Zoom, your Zoom chats. He can see them here. All right, so I'm gonna, uh, yeah, good. I, get, I know people are happy to see Tony. Okay, so I give another five, 10 seconds and then we're gonna close the poll and you guys can see the results. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> okay, it's going faster than you thought. All right, let's see the results. Here we go. All right, so it looks like we have 68% say there's zero, zero to two transactions, 11% is three to five, and 21 is more than five. Not bad, huh? What, what do you think of this, John? Is this surprising to you or? No, I, I don't think I'm surprised. I think there is a, a lot of opportunity for <laughs> how agents should think about their business. And today, Tony has is here to share his story and he's a good testimony and a good example of like there, there are more things that we could have we could do mm. and, and we should get the max out of every single minute of our sweat that we put out there in the in the field and i think this is a great conversation to have great 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 yeah i also want to i realize i want to give a special hello to everyone on facebook live and also uh, mc3 puchong mm -hmm. rifle puchong hello you the gang over there <laughs> So thanks for joining in. All right. So Tony, please come and join us now. I want to in invite you. I'm already to... here. Hello, hello. Hello, good hello. Good you. morning. I'm already here. Have you been having a lot of uh celebrations or a lot of food lately? Uh not really. Not really. Okay. Yeah, not really. Probably working, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Working all day long. Working all day long. Day. That's that's how it's done. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so, you know, I want to, I want, normally we just ask for a quick interview, but a quick introduction, but I think for you, I will ask you one by one, because I think this is uh, quite important. So to find out about your background in real estate, how long have you been in the real estate business? Um, technically, I've joined, in, I joined a real, real estate uh, agency in back in 2021, around June. Okay. So I'm almost two years already, actually, wow. in the in, in this business. Okay. However, prior to that, I actually uh, started off my career with property developers. 
So okay. I have six years experience working with property developers and uh, uh, what I was doing back then was purely marketing works. So things like um, market researching, uh, product development, pricing mm. strategies, packages, you know, the design, the concept, the facilities, what will we implement basically or what will we do before a developer actually decides to purchase a land and uh, launch a product into the marketplace. Very interesting. I, I'm yes. guessing you must have learned a lot during that that time. Oh, of your yes. yes. How long were you doing that? Were you doing that for many years? I was doing that for six years, actually. We launched okay. about uh, four projects so far in Clang Valley. Wow, very yeah. interesting. Oh, I'd like to hear more mm -hmm. about that one day. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so now that you're, so you said you've been an agent since 2021, so about two years. Yep. Um, what is your area of focus right now? Uh, right now, I am focused probably mainly in Mon Chiara and a little bit of uh, the other parts of Clang Valley. But I would say 90% I am in Mon Chiara. Okay. okay. Yes. Right. And uh, as, as the title of our session, uh, how was your result last year? Do you want to share with us? Yeah. My, your um, results in uh, yeah, how many transactions you had and all that. I actually have around 129 transactions Ooh, throughout okay. uh, 2022 itself. Yeah. Wow, that's great. That's great. Yeah, consisting of uh, sales and rental. Uh, okay. And mainly in the sub sales sector. Right. More mainly sub sale. Okay. Yes, in the sub sale. Okay. So even though you came from projects, but then your success is actually not really in uh, like, you, I mean, you had that background experience, but your success now is in sub sale. Yep, that's right. Very cool. Right. So I know when people hear this number 120 or actually 129, it's very exciting. Um, they're like, is it true or not? Like, like, how did you do that? So would you be able to share with us um, some of your success story? Like, how, how did you do that? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> actually, when I first started off uh, in 2021, it was quite a tough journey for me. Oh, okay. How, how is that? Yeah, tell us. Yep. I actually obtained my REN tag in June. All right, June 2021. Oh. And at, at the first week of my my uh, my journey, immediately the government did a three months lockdown. Oh. Okay, a three months lockdown. Right, right, right. So technically when I came abroad, you know, when the lockdown was unlifted, uh, the MCO was unlifted. I actually started off in September 2021. That is the first time where I actually get to, you know, meet meet owners, uh, mm. meet tenants, meet buyers, you know, things like that. So, yeah, it was quite a tough journey. So back then I was only doing uh, one transaction to two transactions a month. And right. these are probably just uh, rental cases. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and then I started realize started to realize that um I'm I'm all over the place trying to get listings trying to you know to work on uh, certain numbers uh, but it's it is quite difficult and then that is where I realized that I need to stop at one area which is Mon Chiara mm. uh, I I selected Mon Chiara and specifically a building itself to become a mm. a specialist of a of a condominium yeah wow so interesting. <laughs> This is, I think a lot of, uh, I, I hear this from many people who start out that they feel they're all over the place. I think at the beginning, you, you don't know where to start, right? So you just yep. take everything you can find, yep. right? So you specialized, yeah. oh yeah, you want to say yeah, that? I got a, a follow-up question because I, I want to understand, Tony, you decided to do this and then in the in a pandemics era, right, the, the second era of the pandemic, uh, which to me was the more serious era because we have a longer lockdown. How would you, what were you thinking about during those times? Because you cannot go out, you cannot, you're just new to the business. Mm -hmm. um, I would say a lot of people, if I were to do it, I may give up, right, personally. And, and what are the things that help you go through that uh, journey? And what's the mindset that you had uh, in order for you to carry on and kickstart the career even during a lockdown? Um before becoming a real estate negotiator so i was with the developer for around six years of time and uh, uh things got bought actually i really wanted a change in 
in what I was doing, and I still wanted to be relevant to the real estate industry. So the closest thing that I can think of, you know, uh, as an easy kickstart will be becoming a real estate agent into this business, actually. And then uh, the one thing to change uh, in, in my life is the one that, uh, that, that drives me to pursue this. Yeah, even during pandemics, yeah. So you the wanting to change your life means you want to change the destiny of your life. That was yep. the why for you. You yep. you know that where you are in the developer is not possible to what yep. you, you want to achieve. And coming to this pandemic, even in this pandemic season, you are very clear that that's the pathway that you want to achieve, that you want to go yeah, through. Yeah, definitely. So that that will help you get to the goal that you want to go. Yep, definitely. But I wasn't expecting the three months lockdown when I joined. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right, right. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Sorry, Mariah Carey. I just wanted to bring that out because I think that's very important for us to understand. Yeah. Like nobody starts in the pandemic a business and then comes out so strong. I mean, I want to understand that mindset. Yeah, yeah. It would be quite easy actually to give up and uh, just right. stop. <laughs> Did right. you ever think of giving up actually at the beginning? Um, no, actually, because I knew that I started at the toughest time. Mm. And if I am able to pull through the toughest time, mm everything else will be easy for me. That's what I think. Amen. Yeah. It's so true. Yeah. Yep. That's very cool. So I like also you mentioned how you focused Mount Kiara, but then you even focus on one building. Why did you decide to do that? Um, Mount Kiara is a very competitive uh, market, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, there's tons of buildings, but there's also tons of uh, uh, other agents out there. You know, it's a very competitive environment. Uh, in order to be not all over 60, 70 condos in Mont Chiara, uh, that is where I think I need to position myself as a specialist, to brand myself as a specialist so that uh, people will come to me and work with me when they need this product. So right. instead of me going all over the entire Mont Chiara itself. Right. Of course, I still do other places, but yeah, my main focus in my first year was this specific building, yeah. Okay, so that was your strategy, right? To brand yourself and be, yeah. I think this goes back to our last session, like be the agent of choice for this place. Yeah. It's like anyone in this building will want to go to you. It's yeah. very cool. Um, can I ask, where did your leads come from? Like, how did you start off? Like, as you mentioned, you just started from nothing, right? So how did you begin and find leads? Actually, I started, uh, specifically in this building, I started with a little bit of cold calling. I worked with a, a lot of uh, uh, interior design companies, you know, hey, do you have a client, you know, under renovations? Can I assist you? Can I assist your clients to, you know, rent out or sell their properties? That's how I actually work. Uh, and I kickstart uh, that journey over there. And uh, for this building, they are actually, you know, you know, how agents actually work. They always take the the paper, the master list, and start ringing. And oh. the, the, the specific building that I am uh, a specialist in is, uh, it has no master list at all. Oh. So no nobody actually has the contact. And then it is through uh, certain strategies where I actually uh, uh, got contacts of certain owners and I assisted them. And it's through all the word of mouth, constant marketing and branding, sharing them, Every time I do a transaction over there, I will tell my clients, hey, owners, uh, I'm happy for you. You know, I've, I've, I've assisted you. You know, you've given this, given me this opportunity. Could you help me to also uh, share, you know, all these uh, done deals to your other neighbors, you know, your owners. And that's where I actually get a, a lot of uh, referral owners. Great. Uh, passing me their units. Hey, you know, Tony, I've heard about you. Can you assist me? My unit will be ready uh, sometime this week or sometime next week. Yeah, that's how I actually uh, did this. Yeah. Wow, I love that. Yeah, yeah so you, you went an extra step to like find the owners of these places. Like you didn't just go with what's handed to you on a platter. You went and do some effort to go and find the owners and connect with them. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I like how you ask for referrals too, asking them to share with their neighbors. That's a that's a great strategy. This is yeah, something I, we talk about. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, because uh, there is this, uh, they, they, the, the owners have the group chat of their own, like uh, their, oh, okay. their own residence group chat. So I constantly actually uh, do up design flyers every time I do transactions mm -hmm. and I share with them market updates of uh, the, the investment that they have bought into. And all these owners will be interested to know what I've done, you know, how how is it that this unit is renting higher or selling higher as compared to their own unit and um, they will all start engaging and talk to me and that is where I actually come into the picture and assist them. So good. I like how you got your face in there. I think your face is often probably showing up in their group chat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a great idea. I like that. Okay. Um, yeah. How did you, you know, you mentioned it sounds like you have a good relationship. Can you just share, how do you do follow up with your clients? So let's say, yeah, like what kind of messages you send them or how do you make sure you stay on their mind? Um, I'm curious. I mean, you mentioned a little bit so far, but anything else you can uh, share with us? In terms of follow up, probably I can share things like uh, what I do uh, on, a, on a normal day basis. Uh, basically, uh, clients who are owners, landlords who have passed me their listings, every time I conduct an appointment to bring mm -hmm. a prospect, I will actually notify them who I'm bringing this week, you know, next week, et cetera. And I will keep them posted of the, the client's feedback, feedback actually. Feedback. Yeah. So uh, I will I'll keep them engaged and uh, uh, letting them know that I am working on their unit. Uh, right. And I will give them feedbacks from tenants if they did not shortlist your unit, you know, I didn't manage to close the deal. And it's due to, you know, certain, certain concerns, you know, yeah, mm. I will always give them feedback and, and advise them whether they, they would actually, you know, consider to do this, to, to do that, to, you know, to get the units up. Right, right. Yep. And how would you, I have this question, how did you seal the deal like 129 times? So how did that, I, I guess you're working also with the buyer side, the renter side, is that, yep. is that right? Um, yeah. How do I seal the deal? I, I would say probably... Um, I would have sealed the deal probably 70, 80% already before they even come to bid. Oh. And the reason why I say that is because I do a lot of uh, filtering. I really speak to the mm -hmm. prospects in terms of their requirements. I will always ask them like, uh, for example, hey, Jonathan, you would like to buy this property in Montiara. So I will actually come into the picture and bring them up and understand or if we if we can meet up that will be better to understand what is their requirements actually like um they must uh, uh what is the budget for example what is the size how many car parks do you need furnish unfurnished mm. i will ask every single question and create actually uh, a very big uh a checklist for i them. love it yeah so that's how i actually start filtering and know what they like and what they dislike and what have they seen before and right. why did they not purchase that yeah. nice that's so good yeah. this is and yeah then, go on from there yeah and then from there i actually uh when when i propose units i will actually uh do up uh, a pretty huge table and then to help them picture for example their their checklist which condo or which unit itself has the most checklist oh yes. okay Okay. Do you do this in a sit down meeting with them or how, how do you do that? When you uh, it's either, it's either through call, through Zoom, or if, if I can, a uh, face-to-face -face will be good. Actually. Nice. So you do that normally after you take for viewing or before? Before. Wow. I love that. Before. Yeah. I love that. So you already, you have their trust enough to, to, to have a proper conversation before you yeah. even take them for the viewing. Yeah, and I believe because uh, if it's a genuine uh, or a serious buyer, they will feed you these information, actually. Right. Yeah. I love hearing this because this is what we're teaching. Uh, so we teach a class called Ignite, where we teach all of, you know, how, how to win the buyers, how to win the sellers. And this is uh, the KW method as well, to take, uh, to go through a full needs analysis before you even take them on a viewing to get all these questions answered right so you don't waste their time and your time right you take them to see like 10 places and none of them are correct or whatever so i love hearing that um it's working for you if you don't mind me asking a bit more because i hear from a lot of agents saying no they don't they people will not answer such questions they don't like to 
Uh, they don't like us trying to ask so many detail. They think well, I'm wasting their time to ask. They just want to see the place and that's it. Can I ask how, wh why do you think you're having a different experience? Like, how do you get the trust that they're willing to sit down and answer all these questions, either, you know, by Zoom or, or sit down, as you mentioned? I, I think uh, there are people who are window shopping for sure. So uh, as we engage these uh, prospects every time we get an inquiry, so I think when we ask them these questions and uh, we let them know that we are here to, to you know, actually understand further so that we can actually help them find the right one. Um, most of the time, if it's a genuine buyer, I think they will, they are happy to work along with you. If they are not, probably they are not ready yet. You can still work with them, but it may, it may take a longer time. Probably mm -hmm. you have to bring them out, you know, to see something, meet them face to face, or probably they have not built a trust with you yet. Okay. Just through okay. the phone. Yeah. So sometimes, sometimes you do have that. You need to yes, see them yes, first. Then only yes. they will open up a bit more. Yes. Cool. Cool. I like that. Yeah. I, I just, I like the way Tony thinks. And I think most agents would model after this thinking process is that our job is to serve the community and serve the people. Our job is to, not to sell. The selling is an effect of serving them. Mm. I think that's where Tony comes and thinks from that perspective. And I, and I think that is where we can learn this new thing that we always talk about, right? How do we serve the customer first? How, we, how do we put the, the clients first, right? And I think Tony is just doing that. Even you can observe from the owner's side, he's creating value. In mm -hmm. fact, by talking to uh, buyers, right, to help them understand what they need. Most buyers don't understand what they need in the very beginning. Yeah. Some journey, some can come, 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 come and say, I know what I want because I've been looking for the past two years. Some can say, I actually don't know what I want, but I want to stay here. Some say, this is new condo. I want to take a look. I'm not sure what I really want. And most of them don't know really what they want until someone journey with them. And I think it's not a powerful relationship because majority of real estate agents today do not put this effort to do this. Mm -hmm. I, I think, I don't know why Tony agrees with me, but I observe a lot. Majority of agents don't think through and sit down and say, how can I better serve this client by knowing his needs? I think the, de the more detail, the more connection you have, the more details you get from them, meaning you have better connection with them. Um, and I think trust is being built when you are truly, truly interested to find out about their needs. So I like what Tony is doing. I think we all should think through how to model after that as well. Very cool. Very cool. Um, I have a question for you, and someone in the chat has the same question. Did you do all of this, the 129 deals last year? Did you do it by yourself, or did you have any, like any uh, assistant or someone that you employ to help you along the way? Um, I did it all by myself, but of course, I have worked with a lot of uh, trusted agents in the market. Okay. Uh, in terms of uh, getting these deals done. So like co um, co broke you mean? Yeah, a lot of okay. co-broking. Um, so how I actually work is every time uh I get uh a listing, the first person I share to is not actually to I property, but to all my business partners who are the potential, you know, uh who potentially can bring a prospect. Uh, it's either uh uh through a listing or through through a buyer, you know. Um I will always share with my close co-agents before uh, actually putting up in the marketplace. I yeah. see. So you have a little, you have a group of those trusted agents that you've been working with and you will send to them first to see if uh, they can. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So uh, that is one of the key things that I've been doing uh, for the last, I think, six to eight months. Probably. Yeah, I like it. It's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. But uh, yeah, so most of these things are, are, are done alone, like uh, managing all the, the rental deals and uh, <laughs> yeah, everything. It's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of, it, it takes a lot of work, right? This is like a lot of documents, a lot of going back and forth and organizing yeah. things. That's quite impressive because it's more than 10 a month. It's quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, someone's asking, are these, were, were most of your deals through exclusive? Were they exclusive listings or with the um, Not really, actually. I think uh, exclusive listings take count probably only 20%. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. And how about when you talk about doing co-broke, what percentage did you do co-broke with, if you don't mind sharing? Probably 60% uh, are co-broke. 
40% I'm doing it myself. In the early days, uh, when I first started, most of the deals are all done alone. Because okay. that I, I just started real estate back then, so uh -huh. I do not know a lot of people. So right. as time goes by, I started working with uh, uh, more and more agents. That is where I I have more closings, actually. Oh. Yeah, so... Right. Yeah. So you're able to do more once you start meeting more agents and co Yes, and, yes, that's for yeah. sure. I'm happy to cover all the time, actually. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. I love it. That's awesome. Okay. Um, yeah, I know John asked earlier about, you know, what you were thinking during during that MCO time, or like, not really, MCO, yeah, but the, the lockdown time, right? Um, yeah, if I were to ask you, what kind of mindset do you think it takes to achieve the results you achieved? Uh, how would you answer this? Yeah. Kind of mindset, yeah. I think um, probably staying hungry is one of the being one of the key, yes, being hungry to, to, to reach your objective. Mm. Yeah. Whether it is monetarily wise, you, you're happy to close a deal or it can be anything, but staying hungry and focused so that when everything comes into place, you will know what to do and what to react. Uh, yeah, when an inquiry comes, I react immediately. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Tony, I want to ask you in terms of how you put your time uh, in place because a lot of time is needed. And you and I had a conversation recently about time, right? How do you how do you manage the time? Because 129 transactions, uh, it's a lot. And I was and I and I think to this morning you just shared with us that um, this year is even more. It's going to be even more in terms of volume. Could be lesser uh, um, value and volume has increased this year, right? How do you consistently manage that time? What do you put? What is? How do you manage that time for your work and your life and all that? How does that look like for you? How do I manage the time? <laughs> <laughs> I think um. I think we have to balance uh, in, in in terms of uh, everything. But for me right now, I am still putting uh, most of my time in this business. Uh. Uh, I still consider myself as a, a very beginner, okay? So I am still putting much more time into this business and uh, prioritizing clients. I set myself like uh, uh, on certain days are uh, all for, for, for follow-up paperwork and stuff. And uh, on okay. a certain number of days, uh, it's actually to, to meet owners, you know, to, to conduct the, the, uh, the viewings and yeah, so on. Maybe I can ask a bit more specific. You don't mind. Mm. How does your day today look like? Like, like today is Monday. Mm. After today, after after this session, how does that mm. look like? What do you do with your time? Because I think that's very important. Because most most agents, I find that they are not they may not be successful enough is because then they may not be doing the right things or things that matter in their time that they have allocated. What what do you do? Mm. Probably uh, one of the most important thing is, uh, I would say, start your day early. Start your day early, uh, no matter which day it is. Because uh, I realized that uh, most people would like to start their day at 10 or 11, you know. But I actually start my day as early as 8.30 online, actually, every day. That is where I will uh, start doing my own uh, things that are relevant to the business. Or I will leave home to a certain destination for an appointment. So uh, the key is it, there is no fixed schedule for me on a day-to-day -day basis, but I just set my uh, working hours mm. uh, being the same as working in a corporate level, mm. in a corporate environment. For example, if you can work uh, nine to six every day, Monday to Friday in a corporate level, applying this amount of time into uh, this real estate business, I think you will be somewhere already. So good. If Rina Zabar is listening, she will be like, yes, yes. <laughs> she always preach about this, about setting your working hours. <laughs> it's so important for, for success. That's cool to hear that you're doing that. Wow. Um, besides, so, I mean, we mentioned about time and how you're doing your schedule and uh, you're saying staying hungry as your, your mindset. What do you think has played the biggest role in your success? Um, yeah, I'm very curious what 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 your view is um, on on this. 
I think it's my constant drive to closing deals. <laughs> Your drive? That is my okay. constant drive, yeah. So uh -huh. uh, uh, deals after deals after deals. So it's, it, it is a sense of satisfaction every time I close a deal. No matter, uh, I think I've said this before last time, but um, even though it is a 500 ringgit rental deal, uh -huh. I will still do it so uh -huh. long as I meet the objective. And the objective for me is always building a very strong database of clientele for myself. Even though if the rental commission is only 500 ringgit, but I win a client's uh, trust, mm. I will do it. No I matter see. what it takes, yeah. It gives you a special sense. It's of not that. only about that. It's because uh, every time I work for a, an owner or a list, as a listing agent, the key point for me is to actually get their trust and win their trust. And how I do it most of the time as strangers, we, uh, we, we always do not have a good connection. And the only way to build this connection is probably through a rental deal. Mm -hmm. When you help them rent out a unit, even though if I don't get paid, but at the end of the day, the owner recognizes my effort for being able to rent their unit. That is where I win. And that is, that is the outcome that okay. I'm trying to achieve out of every deal. Yeah. So it sounds to me there's a lot of perspective that Tony is putting on here and how everyone gets this perspective. It is not a one day, one hit wonder perspective. It's like in the next three to five years, I believe he has a goal that he wants to achieve. How is what I do today help me achieve my goal in the next one, two, three, four, five years? I think he's thinking from that perspective. And I think beginning with the end in mind is important. I think where Tony is thinking about how can I achieve all those things that I want and it starts by my today's action. Now, let's do a check-in on Tony's uh, drive, right? I want to do a check-in on Tony's drive. Tell us how, how was your business last month? The business like, last just, month was yeah. fantastic, actually. Uh, yeah, how many, you do, how many deals did you do? I actually did uh, 17 transactions last month. Right. Uh, yeah, consisting of uh, 10 sales and 7 rentals. Right. Like, How has this improved? Are, are you improving from this year and last year? Because we talked a little bit about it earlier this morning, right? Tell us a little bit about how this year and last year has changed for you. Right. Just a bit from your from your results. Let's start from your results and what have changed you to, to have this kind of results. What have changed me? Um, I think uh, because last year was very, very exhausting, but I knew that I had to go through that process. I have to do, I have to squeeze more than 100 rentals in order to build uh, clients' trust. And in my case, as a new joiner, as a new real estate negotiator, you won't have any database of buyers and tenants on hand. Your only chance is probably through listings. All right, listings. And who gets the cake first, where everybody has this listing, for example. So for me, I was focusing a lot on doing all these rentals in the first year in order to gain clients' trust, in order to convert these landlords into sellers, <laughs> into buyers, in order to convert yes. tenants into buyers yes. as well. So for the first, uh, so for the first uh, year, it was a lot of, um, yeah, really uh, uh, trying to build this connection with the owners and from the second year onwards is where I start, you know, telling tenants, hey, you know, your 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 rental is going to expire in a couple of months. Have you ever considered of buying or sellers? Hey, you know, currently, uh, for example, I've rented uh, more than 100 units in this building. I, I will tell them like uh, there, is a, there is a purchaser actually looking into investing in this property. And currently because of our high rental yield that, We've managed to get uh, throughout uh, the tenancy. There is a buyer who is interested to buy. So that is where I actually started coming in to make what I did on the first year to make sense. Yeah. Right. And right. start transacting in converting rental deals into sales. Yes, this was a bit of perspective for the first, uh, this is the month of April. Like uh, May, you're starting May. For the first four months, how have you been doing in terms of your transaction? Because of what you have built last year, Tell us a bit about what's your first four months journey like. 
first four months, I was doing a lot more and I was focusing a lot more on sale listing already. So I was trying to, uh, a lot of times I, I was marketing um, uh, a lot of my transacted rental deals into selling. Right. Yeah. So I was more focused. I would say probably uh, in a ratio of 100, maybe this time around is probably 60%. Focusing on sales, forty percent on rental. Right, and, uh, it was the other way around uh, last year. Yeah. Right, and how has yeah. this changed your results? How this affected your results? I had a lot more uh, number of viewings for sure. That is for sure, and uh, and uh, these viewings are all buyers instead of tenants. So it right. is still the same game, still the same theory. It is still a number game, but with more viewings, I had more chances. Right. Did you see increase in your production this year compared to last year already based on this strategy yes. that you have done? Yes. In fact, actually, uh, the production uh, for the last four months was 20% higher than my entire year of last year. Right. Yeah. So you already achieved what you achieved last year in the first four months. Let me clarify that. Yeah. yeah Plus 20% right. more of last, for last yeah. year. Yeah, that's right. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I just want to give a perspective for everyone to understand that the game that Tony is playing is what we call the infinite game. Last year was for this year, this year is for next year, next year is for next year. So you have to see that that it think it, that, that is the strategy actually. That is the thinking process behind. It's not complex, right? I think Tony, this is not very complicated. Yeah. It is just a lot of grinding, 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 grinding. I, I'm 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 imagining you grinding and you're probably at the lobby of the condo every day. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's my office. That's your office, yeah. Yeah, I think there are a lot of questions on the on the chat. I think uh Joanne has a few questions. Maybe Marion will ask them. Yeah, yeah. She has a few. I don't know if you can see them all here. Uh she also asked where your leads come from, which I know you shared a little bit earlier. Um, how do you do your branding? And how do you uh because since since Mon Care is so so competitive, how do you stand out? Like, what are some strategies you use to stand out? Um, let me start with those two: the branding and how do you stand out in Mon Care? Uh, there's a couple of ways that I've been always constantly doing in terms of uh, branding. So the specialist building that I am in is actually called the Oak Residence and the Oak Suites. This is located above uh, Kiara 163 Shopping Mall. All right, and uh, number one of the key things that I've been always doing is always putting up myself in online platforms such as uh, iProperty and Property Guru, uh, regardless of the time or, or, or you know, whichever days, I always ensure that I have a lot of listings on, on, the, on the marketplace. That's number one. Number two, it definitely is uh, constantly doing uh, social media activities as well. For example, uh, I actually have a YouTube page, but this YouTube page is more on featuring listings and also uh, Facebook uh, pages. Every time I meet clients or, you know, it can even be agents, I will actually share all these info to them, allow them to actually go and see uh, my day-to-day -day activities, how, how engaging I am, how active I am in this building. And the results that I actually produce every month, I will I will show it even to owners or buyers, etc. So this is a way for me to actually create a branding of myself in the marketplace in such a competitive environment. Are you posting things like every day on social media? Like um, not really every day, but I will always uh, focus on showing my done deals every month, regardless okay. if it's a good month or a bad month. Yeah. Well, he got 17 transactions last month. So he got 17 postings minimum last month, right? That's a simple posting. And, and I think I think the simple thing that he's doing that I okay, what I grab from what Tony is doing is engage the database. And engage the database, engage the people that meets me. I think I probably think he sends out videos, sends out stuff, sends out pictures to people uh, who has just engaged. I mean, I had an experience with him, I had a conversation with him one day talking about this condominium. And two days later, he sent me the pictures of this condominium. And, and, and asked him, I said, I may not buy, no, I just want to look, take a look. But he said, don't, doesn't matter why you don't buy, it's okay. But I know you will think of me. I know you will send out to your friends who might be interested. Right? So that's just, I personally experienced that with him. Uh, it was not very hard selling. 
Uh, he didn't call me every minute, but he just sent me the pictures of this nice, beautiful condo that's just opposite my condo. He knows what I need because I have a co short conversation, right? Uh, and he took opportunity. So I think that's the way to build real branding. It's from the engagement with your database. I feel that's what he's doing correctly right now. I think that's a strategy that I personally experienced with him. And I think most people build branding like talking about themselves, but they're not engaging the database. They're not engaging people in the market. I think that's the key thing here. You must engage the right audience. Not all the audience. I think all audience doesn't make sense, but right audience. I think that's what he's doing. Correct me if I'm wrong, Tony. Do you agree with what, what I say just now? Yep, that's right. That's right. It's not complex. It's very simple. We have a lot of questions here. Um, this is, I think this is an interesting question in, uh, from Facebook. Instead of managing time, we'd like to know how you manage your energy level. <laughs> Obviously, it is very tiring. So how do you, you mentioned that last year was very tiring. So how are you continuing to be able to keep up the pace? Uh, for me, I still allow myself to have uh, certain rest days. I, I will still get uh, times where I, you know, uh, uh, break down, take a rest for a day or two, and then I will start fresh all the time again. It's like a brand new day every day. When I wake up, all, all, all in my mind is close a deal. <laughs> yeah. So you do turn off and just shut off for a little while. <laughs> so yeah. So I still do, yeah. But I think it is a, it is a self uh, motivation and uh, how how you really overcome. Uh, everybody deserves a break, you know, and all. But yeah, it is what you prioritize end of the day. Yeah. Right. Right. I saw a question about managing your database. So, do you keep a, a database, and are you how often do you address that? Hmm. Yeah, actually. Uh, I do have a database that I am doing it, but it is everything very manual. So I've yet to adapt uh, KW's uh, database man management system yet. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, but I'm I'm looking forward to do that actually. That's great. So That's in great. all that will I think allow me to uh, manage more efficiently. Yeah. Right. For example, uh, sending the right uh, messages to the right people in a more effective way rather than my own manual way, yeah. You've been manually just sending messages? Like oh, for... yeah, yeah. I will just uh, just look at my numbers. Okay, I'm going to send this bunch of uh, info to uh, to John, to, to, to so Jonathan. Like, you like know. 10 people, whatever. Yeah, Mr. Lee, this and that. Yeah, then I will, I will. I'm doing it very manually, actually. Wow, and you managed yeah. to do so well. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, I think, oh, yeah, John, you want to say something? No, no, I did. I, okay. I just want to say it's just the same thing in the red book, right? It's just touching the clients, touching them, touching them, touching yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not complex. It's just touching them. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, maybe we, I will get some of the questions. I will get to them a little bit later. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, can I? I know you joined us. You joined the KW family not that long ago. Can I ask? Uh, yeah, when did you join, and why did you decide to join KW? Um, I joined KW officially on 1st of April this year, actually. So okay. it's about, it's about a month and seven days now. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. And, um, one of the main reasons why I, I, I chosen KW is because of the organization's, uh, constant hunger mm. into developing the technology. Right. All right. And uh, we do understand that uh, currently in this uh, marketplace, uh, technology actually plays a very big role. Just okay. using WhatsApp, for instance. Right. Without WhatsApp, how, how are we going to close a deal today? Like, yeah. it's, so, yeah. it's so different compared to the, oh, to the previous generation. So as I can see, KW Malaysia is actually constantly uh, focused in bringing improvements into the tech support and the technology side of things in order to assist every agents to meet their objectives. Mm. So this is one of the key things. And the second thing is because I think it's, it is because of this hunger of tech, KW Malaysia is able to actually retain and attract a lot of uh, uh, senior agents in the marketplace into the organization. And this is something that I would like to relate again with the first part where I said, 
uh, co-networking with agents to close deals. I would like to be surrounded and, uh, and work along with all these professionals actually of the industry actually to close more deals to, to, to achieve bigger things in this uh, business. Wow, exciting. So you're here yeah. to meet other, you're hoping all you can meet other like-minded people that are hungry, that want to do big things yeah. and uh, grow together. Yeah. There was a question earlier, if you have any plans to build a team, I don't know if you thought about this or if you're aware of this idea of building a team that is a, the KW model. Uh, not at the moment, I think. I think I'm still very, very uh, fresh in the industry. I'm now only one part of a uh, uh, one part of the area in uh, in Klang Valley, and I think I have still a lot of things to to go through and learn before I actually think of uh, building a team. So right. right now, I don't think so. Yeah, right. You're yeah. more focused on just like networking with other agents and yeah. making those yeah. connections. Nice. Yeah. nice. So one thing that is a the very big deal in KW is we talk about our big why our big why. So it means like, what is the reason when I wake up in the morning, why am I going to do what I'm doing today? Right? What is my ultimate goal uh, for, for my, whatever, maybe I want to achieve this much money or this many transactions or whatever, but why do I want to achieve those things? Right? What's the purpose? So I know a few people in the chat have been asking, what's your big why? What's your big why? Uh, sometimes I know it can be a bit personal, but um, if you're able to, whatever you're able to share with us, um, what, what is your big why? I think my big why, my big why is just uh, staying hungry to close deal. It is never about the, the amount of money that I'm looking okay. for. It is just the number of, uh, uh, you know, uh, as an individual, I can close, for example, 20 deals a month. Yeah, it's, it's the constant drive to have done deals. That is the, that is a big why, actually. Wow, Tony. Yeah. So, yeah. so in the in the in the red book over there, uh, yeah. the millionaire really said that he always talks about ultimately it's about being the best you can be. So it sounds like you fit into that. Yeah. <laughs> That's our ultimate purpose, right? I haven't read the book yet, but yeah, I do. I do have a copy here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think sometimes people get too complicated. They too get they complex themselves in this big why. It doesn't need to be so complicated, right? And Tony is, I want to be the best I can. I want to test my limits. I want to push my limits, right? Yeah. That's, I want to live the life that I know as the, my best version of myself every day. I think that's a very big, good big why. I think that's a very, very good big why. And, 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 I, and I, think, I think eventually, I'm sure Tony will have a different, different perspective as he goes along in different yeah. stages of life. But I think don't make it complicated that this as an 80 years plan. I mean, I don't think he has, he thinks ahead until 80 years. He's probably thinking next three, five years, uh, you move from there. I, I think that's important for us to focus on now, big why. Yeah. So good. So now that you've joined KW, I'm just curious, how's your experience so far in your one month and seven days? <laughs> I don't know how much experience you've even had. <laughs> it's oh, it's, you're very busy. <laughs> it is, it is actually quite good because, uh, I have a, I have two sales transactions that I actually worked with two fellow KW members. Oh, cool. Just, just in the first month. Yeah. And they are both transacted. Yeah. Nice. And you did an auction, your first auction, 3.7 million auction, right? Yes, that's right. That is actually my first auction deal. I, I worked along with uh, Gordon. Yes. Gordon. Yes. Yeah. Successfully done last week. Yes. I, I, read, I saw. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. 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 Very cool, very cool. Okay, I want to ask you, I mean, John already asked you how are your results so far this year. So it sounds like uh, last month at least um, did very well. <laughs> yeah, and you mentioned that you're already 20% above your whole of last year's GCI. Yeah, can I ask, what are you expecting for your business this year? Do you have a goal for 2023? Um, probably... Probably I'm trying to achieve the one million dollar mark. That that is the first goal that I'm I'm trying to achieve uh, for this year. So I'm doing uh, staying hungry for it you know, until I actually achieve this goal. But I, I I know myself even after achieving this, or even if I am able to achieve this, whether or not, I will still keep going and keep <laughs> right, myself. Right. Yeah. You'll so this is goal. the yeah. So this is the first task. Uh, that I've set myself for this year actually to 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 actually double up of what I have. Yeah. So how far are you from hitting the goal right now, Tony? Oh. I'm I'm fifty percent there. 
Yeah, yeah, fifty percent. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's do a quick. Let's do a quick poll uh, to the people in Facebook and the people on Zoom. Uh, press one if you think Tony is going to achieve his goal this year. Uh, press two if you think he needs to adjust his goal this year. <laughs> Maybe he need to do higher. <laughs> so exciting! Yeah. Everyone, everyone's rooting for you, Tony. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Right, right, right. Maybe I want to just follow through on this mindset here of this million dollar mark. I think it's important for us to think it. What, what, what do you think uh, potentially may stop you from achieving this goal? What I think that will stop me. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think it's. I think it's quite difficult to stop me, <laughs> because it, it all comes from my own uh, mindset and mentality. So right. I think that is the most important thing. If no matter what, uh, let's say if you have 100, 200 listings, but if you are not having the right mindset, I don't think anything will work. Right. Or, or it can be vice versa the other way. Even if I only have 10 listings, I, I can actually work on that and, uh, and achieve a certain goal. So I think, I think mindset is the key over here. And uh, How do you protect your mindset? How do you protect yourself not to get distracted? What do you do that you don't get distracted uh, so much? Probably self-discipline. Yeah, most of the time, self-discipline. And stay focused on what uh, you really want to achieve. Uh, maintain that and I think, uh, I think you can really go towards it. Yeah. Right, right. All right, any more questions? Yeah, there's uh, there's another question that we missed earlier. It's, um, okay, so this is also from Facebook. It says, may I check what's your rental renewal percentage? Do you, And do you do follow-ups on every rental payment by tenants and maintaining the relationship with your landlords throughout the rental tenure? Can you catch all that? <laughs> do yes. <laughs> Uh, first of all, yes, I am. I am still managing all the rental deals that I've concluded. So this number only keeps going up, but there are, of course, uh, uh, a termination of not renewing tenancies. I get a relief of that actually, uh, because that's where I I I actually have one more listing to rent. But yeah, I still do follow up a day-to-day -day basis when necessarily, when things, uh, when there's a problem with the tenancy or when there's a payment default, I still do that on a daily basis. Yeah. Oh, okay. And a renewal basis, I think that in the condo that I've done is probably 50-50. I'm happy with renewal. I'm also happy if they're not renewing. It is because I am, yeah, uh, I, have a, I have a rental unit that was just checked out last week, actually. The tenant just moved out last week. Uh, and it was because of the checkout, I sold the unit in a week. Right. I was able to bring buyer and sell the unit. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy. No matter if it's a renewal or not renewal, even if it's not a renewal, I can still rent the unit again. Wow. So it's and, this time, and this time round, it is probably an exclusive listing because the owner has appreciate, appreciated my efforts that I have been servicing and following up for his rental issues for the last one year. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Okay, there's another question by Yumi here. How do you approach uh, every new listing landlord? Assuming you're, you're meeting the landlord for the first time to ask for the listing, how do you start that conversation so that the landlord doesn't reject you? What, 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 is it, what do you do in your first conversation with a new landlord that you just meet? Uh, first of all, I every time when I get approached with a landlord for a listing, I think I will uh, always ring them up. I will speak to them. Um, I will always encourage them to meet up in order for me to understand their, 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 their needs, how quickly... Uh, they want to get this rented out or, or selling out, you know, or what is the price expectation? Uh, that's that's the I think the basic fundamental that everybody mm -hmm. has to do uh, is to go out and meet the owners and uh, talk to them, understand, and that is where you start building a good trust with them. And uh, definitely do not use, you know, uh, there are a lot of cases where. Um, when you approach a landlord, a landlord will just send you a bunch of uh, photos. Hey, please go and market this, but uh, it does not work. 
this most of the time does not work because if it works, it will not be your turn. It would have yeah, it would have trans it would have been Already. transacted long ago. Oh. Right. The, the, the opportunity won't be yours. So in order to do something different, we I always encourage owner. If it works, it already worked. You don't have to come to me. So definitely something is not working. It uh, might be the price. It might be the condition of the unit. But the only way to find out is let's just meet up and take a look uh, at the unit and we can understand how we can uh, assist each other for a win-win wow. situation. Yeah. So so basically coming, <clears throat> knowing that sending out messages like that won't work. You are already, you are already trying to give value to the owners by saying that, hey, you need a consultation. It's not working. Let me help you. Yeah, and uh, most of the time I will actually go to iProperty to look for the same set of images and I will actually <laughs> screenshot and uh, discuss with the owner, hey, look, you have five agents doing the same thing for you. Uh, I don't want to be the six, I want to be something different. Let me go in and check out the unit. I'll take a different set of photos. It might be something wrong with the unique condition that is not fulfilling or it might be a, a, a certain issue where it's the price point does not meet. Meet the meet the right uh the, the target wow. market yeah wow, wow. Yeah. I love that <laughs> can I ask how many owners you meet in a week I'm just curious uh, like how many owners do you meet in a week because it's so simple right this thing is so simple what you're doing it's not complex so how many owners do you end up meeting a day a week uh, a month roughly probably at least three owners a week yeah at least three, gym, minimum yeah, three owners yeah, a week. Yeah, yeah. In the, yeah, at least at least three. In 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 the place where I am uh, specialized, I actually get owners to to give me listings themselves. I yeah, so I don't really have to to go meet them at times when they come to me. The the the, the level of approach is much different. Yeah. Right. So as an agent, if you approach an owner to get a listing, or the other way around, it is a very very different thing. So right. when an owner approaches you, whatever you say is deemed to be credible already because right. through referrals, yeah, it is right. very easy to work on those listings already. Right. So you build, how many percentage of your business is referral based right now? Mm, I think probably 60%, 70%. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So this is something I talk about, Maria, all the time because if you're in the business more than two to three years and a big percentage of your business is not referral based, it's going to be a very struggling business. Mm. Like it's yeah. going to be a very struggling business if you don't have referrals in your business system. Something is wrong right in this business when the referrals doesn't come in. And I think Tony is a good example how he's scaling his business through referrals and through building that relationship, right? I think that's the critical part of it uh, that he's doing very well. It's not complex. It's really not complex. It's okay. But it's not easy to do. <laughs> yeah, it takes that yeah. determination. Yeah. Okay, I have to, I want to ask Tony a question. Um, so I was very excited, as, as hopefully everyone on the call knows, we are running Ignite starting this week. We're very excited to start Ignite, our class, our big course, um, with a lot of different topics. And I saw, Tony, you signed up for Ignite. Yeah, I did. Yes, I think this is quite exciting. So you didn't sign up for the whole course, but you signed up for one section, right, of the yeah. uh, one of the modules. Um, can I ask why you decided to sign up for, for this course? I want to. I actually wanted to explore uh, what are the strategies that uh, KW is uh, suggesting, and uh, how aligned it is, how how aligned or different it is with the with, with the way and the methods that I'm actually practicing on a day to day basis. Yeah, Very exploring cool. more uh, definitely more uh, knowledge, you know, uh, to 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 gain from from the course. Awesome! Awesome! Yeah, that's exciting. I think it's, I mean, it's really inspiring to hear from you as someone who clearly is very hardworking and already achieved a quite a high level of success. And you felt that you want to come to our company, to KW, to grow more. You felt that we can help support you to grow more. You can see the value of the passion that's there. I mean, there's all these hundreds and thousands of people in the U.S. doing this technology, doing these uh, education programs, you know, training and all that. So, yeah, I'm excited just to see that you can see the value. I know I see it. We see it. Lot. So it's exciting that you can also I, I, I do believe if just from hearing you from hearing from you, it sounds like you are on the same mindset lot, that we there is that connection. And um, I'm excited to see what you're going to achieve you know, as you learn even more ideas um, from from the world of 
the best, really, the best in, in the world on real estate. So it's quite exciting. <laughs> Excited to have you. So what's next for you, Tony? What are some of the things that you are planning to pick, to execute in order to make sure that you hit your goal and beyond your goal that you have set for you this year? What are some of the things that you are taking action to change the way you look at your business uh, this year? Um, clearly, I think uh, with, with the goal that I've set for myself, uh, a lot of uh, the activities that I engage will shift. For example, I am doing uh, probably in the last year, doing probably most of my activities are related to rental cases. So what I'm doing this year is probably converting a lot of uh, these rental cases into sales cases. And apart from that, uh, changing or a shift of a product segment. So um, let's say I'm doing something around 700,000 or around 1 million uh, right now. I have to I have to bring in uh, products that are, you know, uh, uh, at a higher, bigger ticket, such as uh, from 1 million to 2 million, for example. And uh, these uh, sale transaction will take place. Uh, have to have to be take place this year, and uh, even their rental cases are probably uh, two times of what I'm doing in terms of value. So it is a it is a sh shift of a product. Uh, I think a, a product inventory, uh, while right. still maintaining what I'm doing. It, it right. is the so key. Yeah. Same activity. Just focusing yeah. on a different segment of the market a little bit more. Yeah. Um, in the way we, in the world of KW, we call that shift, but mo, mo, putting adjustment in our economic model. Yeah. Just looking at the the, the economic uh the uh the the, the 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 things that will affect the economic model uh, and the number and the, and the value and the volume of transaction, right? I can do one sale that could be equal to 10 of my rental, for example. Yeah. Yeah, you're shifting that right now, you're shifting this. This right now, do you do you do do you think you'll be hiring an assistant? Do you think you'll be hiring an admin? What 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 do you think be doing something like that in order to help you move to this direction? Uh, probably yes. I am I am exploring uh, uh to to hire an uh, admin actually to assist me in terms of uh, uh paperwork and uh, the day to day basis of a, a rental you know a rent a rent rental management. Yeah, I think it is key because uh, it takes a lot of time for me to focus. It gives me a lot of time to focus, but I need to focus. Yeah, right. which is right. building the clients, building and building the clients. Religion, relationship, relationship, yeah. connecting, connecting, connecting. Yeah. All the other stuff, let someone else do. Yeah. Right, awesome. Mm -hmm. so, Raya, back Great. to you. Okay, small question. Do you do mostly 3% or 2% commission? Uh, good question. I think everybody wants three percent, so I will always start with three percent. But uh, one thing for sure is that I do not limit myself with only three percent. And uh, how? What do I mean is actually uh, I always work with the sellers. If I can achieve this price to this price, I will get three percent. Mm. If I get anything, if I I have a I have anything lower. Uh, we can work along the commission structure, you know, so long it's a win-win uh, basis between uh, me and the, the seller. You're happy, I'm happy, the buyer's happy, then yeah, it will work. Right. So, But I always start with 3%. Right. Win -win. So the volume is more important to you, the number of transactions is important to you because it builds reputation, it builds yeah. credibility. That's So it's a very big picture, long-term perspective yeah. that Tony has, right? There's another very interesting question here. Do you mind sharing what's your most complicated sales transaction you ever did and how do you do it? Like what's the most difficult transaction for, for, for sale that you have ever done before? Mm. Is there any? <laughs> it is time to think about this probably. <laughs> uh, not really actually. I mean, it's just all the common common problems so far. Yeah. Right. I'm Price adjustment. <laughs> Price, yeah, price, price adjustments, adjustments. yeah. Maybe, maybe something that is the most complicated is um, uh, a deal where a buyer and seller has signed the SPA, you know. Uh, the buyers are actually uh, complaining a lot of things about the unit problems and it, how it has to be fixed up by the seller uh, right. before handing over and there is an argument, you know, this is not as is where it's basis. When I came on, when I came in buying for the property, uh, uh, this <laughs> this scratch on this wall wasn't here. Now it's here. So, right. yeah, the seller has to be liable on this, or you know, the the little little things. Yeah. 
Right, right. Awesome. Maybe you, you have to do more. I'm sure you'll need some more complicated transaction like, yeah. if you go along the future. But but yeah, but yes. Sure. Okay, awesome. Last question by Fifi. Do you go out for drinks and lunch with clients or you build repo strictly during work hours? Yeah, during work hours, actually. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. There's, there's a lot of ways we can do to balance our life if you are clear what we are doing. I mean, if you are very clear and focused on what we do, we can have a very good life. Right. Mariah, anything on your side? Uh, not, I think I'm done with questions, but I want to uh, just ask everyone on the chat, are you getting value today from this session and from hearing from Tony? Uh, I'd love to invite you just to write what you've learned, one thing you've learned, your aha inside the chat, just to remind each other, because there's probably a lot of things. So if we can get a list of all those ahas, we can uh, yeah, summarize all the great learning from today. Yeah. Yeah. Share your ahas, man. Share your ahas, guys. That's a, it's a good way of us kind of imprinting this uh, knowledge or value that we just got from Tony. If you are learning something from Tony, please also share your gratitude to him. Uh, that he's taking his time off to really be very open about his business to share share with you guys. Anyone with any ahas, please put in the chat box. That will be very helpful for us as well. Amara, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. And then Tony, I'd love you to prepare just a small word of encouragement to everyone, something you want to leave them with before we end the call. But before you do that, we have a lot of announcements. Um, so I would like to bring up the slides. We have a lot of things to share with you guys today. So as I mentioned, we have Ignite happening, right? So there's 20 sessions. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of content, but it's really worth the time to come for this course. And um, so I know, I think we already have 19 people signed up. Um, which I'm very excited. So this is going to be at the KW Malaysia Training Center, which you can access through inside the flagship, uh, Reapfield HQ flagship. You can enter in there. So if you have not signed up, you can still sign up. It's not too late. We run from 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Tuesdays to Fridays. You can also, maybe next slide, you don't have to come for um, every session. Huh? Okay, if you're a rookie, you need to come for every session. <laughs> you need to come from beginning to end so that you can know what's happening. But um, if you uh, if you're an R2 like Tony or you know you've been around for a while doing some some transactions, we can we would love to invite you just to come for one module or one set of the classes. So uh, of course module one is first. So just so that you can understand, it's really about how learning how to connect with the market and becoming a local expert and how to come up with your value proposition. And we also cover. Uh, you get to in the course itself in the first module we will be creating your agent site you'll be learning a bit about data labs downloading the apps you know a lot of things that you will learn just from just from module one so there's a link here if maybe if they can someone can put it in the chat the link to register great okay so i hope to see a few more registrations after today we have a bit more space maybe another like 10 spots maximum maximum okay what's next next slide all right, so Red Day, guys, this Thursday is Red Day. This is exciting. So we are joining with the whole world, right? This In 60 countries, we have KW, um, Tyler Williams is doing their Red Day where they are reaching out to the community to give back and to just connect and serve the community. So we are going to be uh, partnering with Yaya San in Chowkit. Uh, from 11.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Thursday. So how you can join in, you can donate for meals and materials for games. You can plan, do some planning with the games committee. You can, on the day, you can prepare and serve meals. You can play with the kids. Lots of things we can do. Um, if you haven't already signed up, please do. You can either sign up from the, uh, the, the QR code. Oh, so the QR code is for donations, sorry. But there will be a sign up in the chat now. Let's put that in here. Um, and you can also buy, uh, it's, we're all going to wear our KW Cares t-shirts. And there's a special red day sale. It's only 40 ringgit um for this red day time so it's usually i think 50 ringgit so you guys should come and, and get the t-shirt it's actually honestly the nicest kw t-shirt it's my favorite <laughs> so recommended that you all join in uh and, and get a t-shirt yeah, i want to add on this Mariah, because I, yeah. I volunteered to cook and serve the food so if you want oh. me to see how to cook and serve food uh you you get a chance to join this session and you can get to see me cooking right so or i don't know i don't know what this serving and preparing food is I'm assuming is doing some sort of cooking or serving. I don't know what that means, but yeah. So come and join us on Red Day. Yeah. Okay. Great. The link. The link is there in the chat now. So please, everybody, want to see everybody there? Let's come, come, come. All right. Next one. Next slide. 
All right, so we've uploaded, uh, Yunxing has lovingly uploaded all the client touch points into Circle. So if you want to find them, you just go to Circle, you click on the little magnifying glass at the bottom, you write touch points, and you can search for all the touch points. So then you can use these to download, uh, personalize, and touch base with your owners, your potential clients, everybody that you want, just to make that connection, right? And stay at the top of their minds that you are available to help them and serve them. Okay, next slide. Right, so we have the, these are the things happening at Flagship Market Center um, this week. So um, we feel, so Subang, Sha Alam, Klang, Klang Agents, there's a new location now in Damen Mall, so you can take note of that. In, um, there's the power hour on Thursday. So this, of course, this Thursday is red day. There's nothing happening, but this is, these are the future events happening that you guys can get a lot of value. And also on Tech Thursdays, the next one is going to be on customizing your command marketing through campaigns and design. Okay, next slide. The other things here, we also have the top left is the RSP program, which Roland is doing. It looks awesome for, especially for those newer agents that want some coaching and want some help. It's a great program. So this Coming next session will be on discovering your market. Uh, that's with Roland Tan if you want to reach out to him. And then we have new agent services and accounts members, Anne and Nazira. So we can please welcome them when you see them in the office. And of course, we have our doctor in the house consultation as well. So as you can see, there's a lot of things going on. There's a please put there's a there's a scan me. You can see all the information. There's also a link. There's a magazine where you can see that. There's a lot of things, right? So you can go through on your time and check out all the things that are available to you. Uh, yeah, so we also, um, is there any more slides? I think there's nothing else. Huh? But just, I know MC3, the Puchong office, also have a lot of things going on. You can see them in circle. They post their stuff in circle as well. You can go and see what, what stuff they have going on as well. So just want to let you know, there's no lack of stuff, uh, support for you guys, right? So hope that you're feeling uh, that you have things to learn. Like Tony also want to learn, right? Doesn't matter how good you are, you can still learn new things. Okay, so let's come back. I think Tony is... Um, doing something okay here we go right. <laughs> all right I did you did you read all these comments in the chat Tony I don't know if you have time to read so many <laughs> yeah yeah I'm reading actually <laughs> quite a lot it's quite a lot <laughs> we can yeah. write a little book already <laughs> yeah so um any what, what are your closing thoughts that you would like to share with everyone on the call today um I think to 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 really excel in this uh, industry, I think uh, just think of uh, the goals and objectives that you really want to achieve and really work on it. Uh, always stay motivated. Um, always just remember that uh, you cannot serve the whole world. The market is very big. You only need to work with people who believe in you. Mm. And uh, once you do that, just keep. Uh, repeating and finding the same category of people. Yeah. And this is uh, uh, where you will start seeing changes. Instead of trying to please every client, you only need to please people who really put their trust in you and gives you the opportunity. Yeah. Wow. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. John, you want to make a comment about that? <laughs> I, 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 I think today's session uh, give me a perspective that this business is not complicated. It's just a lot of hard work and grinding. And just be clear what you need to do every day, be focused. I think, uh, I, I, I don't need to say so much. I think just be like Tony. Like, be simple. like Tony, go follow him on Instagram, Facebook. Can we follow you on Instagram and all that? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> How do we get your Instagram and Facebook? What is your Instagram link and Facebook link? I, I don't know if you can... Uh find a way to put in the chat box so that uh, we people can follow you. Because I think if you just look up, look at this, the way he does it, the uh, way, <laughs> I think it's not complicated. It's not complex, right? Just keep 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 going, keep calm and just be like Tony. You should yeah. do a t-shirt like be like Tony. Be like Tony. Be hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so I think right. you just posted there. All right. She posted Facebook and Instagram. There we go. Okay, you're going to have a lot, lot more fans today, Tony. <laughs> Yeah, but thank you so much, Tony. Really, thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing so openly. And um, really, thank you. you achieve all your goals and dreams and do not, with the sky is the limit, right? It's exciting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank you. you thank you, you for inviting. Your, you need to change your goal, make it higher, okay? Make it higher. Uh, 
Oh, okay. We'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Exciting. And thank you to everyone on the call. Thank you to those in Facebook and in Puchong and uh, all on, on, on uh, Zoom, of course. So thank you, everyone. Wishing you a great day. I'll see you in Ignite. I'll see you on uh, Red Day. And we'll see you next Monday for another Winning Mondays. All right. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>